Hello there, my name is Catherine and this is my channel So Much Sewing. Thank you so much for being with me here today. I really do appreciate it. I really do appreciate the fact that I have reached 1,000 subscribers. Um, so thank you everybody who has been with me right from the start and anyone who has jumped on board partway through and my recent subscribers. Thank you so much. It was actually quite funny because when I mentioned that I had 1,000 subscribers in my last video, um, immediately, I, when I, well, the next time I went in and had a look, I had lost two subscribers, so it put me under the 1,000 threshold, and I did get a couple of people saying, well, I can see you've got 998 subscribers, so I've just subscribed, um, or I can see you've got 999, so that was me and my big mouth, wasn't, wasn't it? I should have waited till I had a few more, but I'm steady at 1,000 now, and so that is awesome. Thank you so, so much. Today really should be just a short little video. Um, I just want to talk about the two Stanton hoodies, minus the hoodies, the two Stantons that I made. And I also would like to talk to you about the two shoe dresses that I made. We've just been, um, actually I was in the garden this morning and I sort of judged myself up to go down to the garden center. And um, I tried, well, the idea was that I would get some photos of me wearing my Stanton hoodie, minus the hood, um, at the garden centre, because I figured you're probably bored to tears seeing me stuck in the corner over here when I take the photos. So I tr was, you know, trying to get some interesting photos for you to sort of liven things up a little bit. But um, forgot, didn't we, as soon as we uh, left, it was like, ah, oh, forgot to take the photos. Oh well, so I had to take some photos when I got back of me standing over there in the corner. I'm, so I'm sorry about that, but at least the thought is there to try and liven things up a little bit. First of all, I will talk about my shoe dress from Style Arc. I have been talking about making this dress for a while. I had purchased the pattern and it was on my radar of things to make. But then I saw a um, item up for sale on our Trade Me. Uh, um, secondhand item it was um, or thrifted that sounds better than secondhand doesn't it it's a thrifted item um, it's a very expensive New Zealand designer called Euphoria and this item brand new would be in the region of 300 probably more than $300 which is very 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 roughly about 150 um, American dollars or 150 British pounds so not a cheap item and I saw it up for sale and it's you know sort of 40 or 50 dollars which is completely doable but I just looked at it and I thought actually I can make it and to be perfectly honest that's what I think a lot of times I like to keep my eye out on you know for design items that I can pick up for a bargain who doesn't like a design item for a bargain but a lot of the times I look at them and think, actually, I can make that myself. Um, you know, sometimes they're quite sort of intricate designs and they're things that, you know, I might struggle to make. But this was a very, very simple jumper. And I will put a picture in um, up here, I suppose, um, to show you what this item was. And it's a merino cocoon style long jumper. And what I particularly liked about it was the um, the seam line that runs along the top of the chest and along at the back as well. That was what I particularly liked and I loved the, the cocoon shape to it. Um, the neckline, I like a sort of a cowley neck. I thought it was a bit uh, tight looking for my liking but overall it was a jumper that I thought I would really like to try and then I so I was wrecking my brains for a pattern similar that I might have seen similar to that but especially that had the the seam line across the top and I couldn't think of a pattern um, there were very you know similar ones and I did consider the sure dress which I'll pop a picture up here for you to have a look at to remind you what that looks like. And um, and so I just couldn't, I couldn't find a pattern that I thought was quite right. And so I ended up contacting Ginny from the Big Sew Along 
um, I'll link her down below. She's a very funky mama and she comes up with all sorts of different um, sewing pattern companies that I had not have not heard of before. She's um, got a, a very funky style and I just thought that perhaps she might know of a pattern that was bang on. But unfortunately she couldn't think of anything either. Um, and then I just sort of started mulling things over my brain and I just realized that the shirt dress was actually very, very similar. This jumper that I saw didn't have the, you'll see the, the seam line around the skirt um, of the shirt dress. This jumper that I was looking at didn't have that. But in essence, it was very, very similar minus the seam at the shoulder line. So I decided that the shirt sure dress was actually the closest. It was just about everything that I wanted. It just didn't have that seam line across the um, top of the chest there. So I just actually cut the seam line in. I um, took the pattern piece, um, drew a straight line across from one side to the other, cut it and added a seam line to each of the pieces. And so um, I then ended up with And again, I will put pictures in of me wearing this, but you can see I ended up with the seam line across here. And it's on the front and the back. And on the back, I didn't have quite enough of this fabric, and so I ended up putting a um, join on this piece as well. You cut this on the fold, I think I said. And so I um, just actually, on the front, I could cut it out all on the fold. But on the back I didn't have enough so I ended up putting a um, seam in here, adding a seam allowance to it. And I'm very very happy with the result. I really like the seam running across the front like that. Um, this is a merino from Deepest Darkest Stash. I think it actually must be a second. I did get it um, off someone's D stash account, and I think it might be seconds. I didn't pay an awful lot of money for it because um, it just seems to be off slightly off, like it was twisted on the roll. Um, so it was a little awkward to work with, and I think in places it does look like the um, you know like there's a bit of. It's a sort of a mild effect and so you can sort of see it's a little bit off grain. If a knit fabric has a grain, I'm not sure if a knit fabric actually has a grain but I think you know what I mean. Um, so this pattern was so simple to put together. You don't even finish this neck edge, um, although you could if you wanted to, and you just then tuck it down to however much of a polo-y cowl you would like your neck to be. You just tuck that down. Um, just, uh, are they called grown-on sleeves? Um, what I did is because I didn't really want that seam around the bottom of the dress, I wanted it just to sort of be one and sort of cocoon in. So um, there is the separate piece for the skirt, and you'll see this doesn't have it, because I didn't put the second, the, the skirt piece on, and I just sort of put another, taped a piece of paper to the bottom of the pattern piece, and just sort of, you know, shaped it in myself, that, that was on the straight, on the fold, so that was on the fold, but then I just sort of, shaped it in like that and when by the time I'd finished and I put it on it actually was too much and it wasn't sort of hanging properly so I ended up cutting this off um, at the place where the skirt would start basically and so I really like the length of it um, I love where it sits I like um, it's sort of a sort of a loose baggy fit really super happy with this and I love the color and it's very snugly warm. So that was my first version of the Sure Hack. And this is my second version of the Sure Hack. And it's in a black merino. 
same thing the same seam lines front and back the big dog here or cat here what I did find with the purple one which I forgot to mention was that the neck was very tight like you have to pull it like when you're a kid you know and you're sort of pulling this thing over your head to get it on I just that was it was just too tight for me so I wanted to make this neckline wider which I did do and so I just you know widened it out this way so the pattern piece had it sort of this wide and I widened it that way I feel like it's quite floppy um, this one probably would have been better you know tighter like originally because I and you'll see in the pictures that it does sort of maybe not sit quite as well as I would like it to. This fabric is also merino. It is about 70% merino and about 30% nylon or um, polyester or something. I can't quite remember. And the way that mix worked out is that it seems to be that it's merino on one side and on the other side is, I think this is the man-made content. It seems to be made that way rather than, you know, like the, the fibres being mixed together. And so this, I think, is actually the right side, which I've put on the inside because I wanted blackest black for my top. And I feel that this, that's kind of a more of a charcoal -y colour whereas I wanted blackest black. So that's what I, I have put on the outside. You'll see that I have put the skirt piece on. Um, I feel like the two things that are not quite right with this, gosh, we're so hard on ourselves, aren't we? We feel like it doesn't hang the way I would like it to. I think, and also I think the neck is, a, is not quite 100% right but you know again I'm very happy with it I'm going to be wearing it um, I wore it out yesterday my husband took me out for brunch and I'll put pictures in here of me wearing it out for brunch and I'm wearing it with the um, Bichal jacket that I made from Stylark I made that in a mostly wool boucle um, I made that jacket when I was a lot larger. It was before I had lost my weight. And so technically it's too big, but I really like that oversized look. And um, when I make it again, I will make it, you know, a size down, maybe two sizes down, but I like that really oversized look. And actually I put that outfit on and I said to Chris, this is me. This is me. This whole outfit is just me in an outfit. I just love it. I love wearing black and greys and I love leggings. They're my favourite piece of clothing. And this item, sorry, this outfit I just thought sort of encapsulated me in an outfit. And so um, I felt very comfortable and happy going out for brunch in that outfit. So I think I've got one more of these in me. In fact, I've got, I just realized I've got a really cool, it's a merino again, but it's a very, it's a much heavier merino. Well, heavier, it's got a sort of a, almost a honeycomb texture to it. It feels a lot more airy, somehow substantial, but sort of like a honeycomb sort of feel to it probably doesn't make any sense but it's a um, black and potentially I'm not sure if it's a grey or sort of a torpy colour stripe and so I think I will make one more of these in that fabric and I think that will do me but this is I mean this is just one and done dressing you pop this on with a pair of leggings and a pair of boots and away you go uh, when I went out for brunch, it was a beautiful, gorgeous autumn day. It was sunny, um, cold, but not freezing. So I just had a cami on underneath it. But in, you know, when it's really cold, you just put another layer of merino underneath or even a cotton jersey, sorry, cotton t-shirt, and this would just be so snugly warm. So I'm very, very happy with my hack, and I'm actually quite, quite proud. I think I was quite clever. Now we can talk about my Stantons. 
I've seen Whitney from Tomcat Stitchery just wax lyrical about the Stanton hoodie and how much she loves it and how many versions she's made and um, I completely agree it is so cool it is such a simple pattern to make there are a bazillion pieces I'm not going to lie and when I first cut out all the pieces I just thought oh <laughs> this looks so complicated but they all just go together I mean which is a funny thing to say but you just sew one piece to one piece then you sew another piece to that and then you sew another piece to that and it all just goes together just so easily and bada bing bada boom this one this one this one it's a very simple process and I just love the result you saw my original one made in the camo print with the gold sort of painted on here I haven't worn this around the house yet because I wanted to film this video uh, before I did that because I knew as soon as I started wearing around the house it was going to get covered in cat fur, dog fur, dog slobber you know <laughs> it's not never going to look as nice as it does now so I just love it this fabric is I think it's a French terry but there's really not a lot of stretch to it and it's a snug fit uh, in the top I won't lie I made a 14 around the top a 16 around the waist and then I graded out to a 22 at the hip um, and it's the right size it's just that this fabric doesn't have a lot of stretch in it so when I'm wearing it I feel when I first put it on I feel like oh yeah a, a bit restrictive around the arms but I have worn it you know for a little bit not um, properly around the house but to take photos in and just sort of mooch around a little bit and the more I wore it the more comfortable it was I just I actually didn't want to take it off so I can't wait to start wearing this around the house um, the, I think the warmer the fabric got it just sort of molded to me and and while it's not a, it's not tight it's not as stretchy as this um, this French terry I've got on here but somehow it just feels like a glove and I don't want to take it off like I say I love the kangaroo pocket in the front I love all the shaping it's got a um, band where is it here it is it's got a band around the back and the kangaroo pockets it's got shoulder detail the back is very cool it's sort of the pieces don't look like normal pieces like um, you know can you see the curve in the back there they don't it just looks quite strange when you are um, got all these pieces laid out they don't look like an, a, a normal back where you'd have your neckline um, and your armhole and what have you it doesn't look like that at all and so it's a little bit it is nerve-wracking initially but like I say it just goes together the only place I really did struggle a little bit was putting these shoulder pieces onto the back the instructions are very 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 clear and very 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 good except doing this part they weren't quite so clear but I managed to, to figure it out um, but it was the instructions were great they were saying down to use a three millimeter straight st stitch here or um, you know use your overlocker here it was very 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 detailed and I really appreciated that um, and so I didn't put a hood on I, I'm not really a hoodie person um, I've had the odd one in my life and they're okay they are actually quite nice to pop up the hood when it's windy outside I will give you that but I'm just not generally a hoodie type person so I just put a plain neckband on this one um, and on this one obviously I might consider putting a wider you know like made out of the French terry fabric rather than the rib I just used rib on the cuffs and the neckline um, but if I used a French terry I do kind of fancy having I'm sort of all about the high necklines at the moment which 
surprises me. I feel like this one sits a little bit low for me. So I think putting a higher one on that sort of sits up a little bit. You know, like one of the ones that's not a hoodie, but it sits up and it might have a drawstring in it. I might do something like that on my next version if and when. Well, I'm sure I will at some point, but I've got no immediate plans to make another one. Um, but so, yeah, this is the second one I made out of a poppy french terry the brand is actually poppy as well as the design being a poppy you can see the black here i sort of do kind of wish i had used black on the kangaroo pocket as well i think that might have looked quite good but this is so comfortable i made this one shorter the other the camo one is too long for my liking Um, that's just not what I had in mind but fine great for lounging around home no trouble whatsoever but uh, this one I wanted a little bit shorter and um, so that's what I have done I've made it shorter and it's just so comfortable it really is and it's so snugly um, it's not too hot to wear I can always layer this with you know long sleeve t-shirt or a merino t-shirt underneath um, but yeah, I've worn this out a few times and, um, yeah, I really love it. And my next project is kind of a little bit of a carry on, um, from the Stanton. You know how I said the Stanton had a lot of pieces and it was quite nerve wracking sort of thinking about putting them all together. Um, this project sort of just came to me out of the blue Tilly and the Buttons was having a I think it might have been a Mother's Day sale as a lot of people are and I just look was looking through her pattern selection I found the Rosa dress which is you know like I, the way I would describe it as a classic sort of western shirt or shirt dress with a back yoke and a front yoke um, you know shaped pockets princess seams all the way down the front um, and so I just thought well the Stanton seemed scary but I tried it and it was actually easy to do so I looked at this shirt dress and I thought yep I'm going to get that so I did I purchased that pattern um, and I've got some pink drill that I've had in my stash for the longest time. It's actually a lot brighter and pinker than um, I thought it was going to be when I purchased it online which is why it sort of sat in my stash for a while but it's going to be perfect as a 12 for this rosa dress to see if it actually um, turns out the way I hope it will. I am a little bit concerned I know there's all the princess seams for shaping so you can get good shaping that that's fine but if you recall the, what's it called, the fringe, no, the flounce dress, the flounce dress by the Sewing Revival, if you recall I made that recently, and I ended up having to put an awful lot in the hips, because when I'm standing up, it's it was fine, it fitted fine, no issues whatsoever, but when I sit down, I'm quite sort of soft around the middle, and when I sit down, everything goes <clears throat> So when I sat down, the ease in the, in the flounce top that was enough when I was standing up wasn't enough when I was sitting down and it was quite tight. Um, and that's why I graded out to a size 22 for this as well. You know, so this is a 14 here and this is a 16 around the waist. And if you can imagine if I had, you know, you can see the ease there so there is ease but it's not giant amounts so if you can imagine if I had great you know kept the size 16 around here it just would have been so tight around my tummy area so as with the Stanton hoodie grading way out for the hips um, to sort of so that means that when I sit down and spread out there's still ease and comfort there and it's not you know like too tight around my lower tummy um, so I've cut out the larger size 
Um, now this is one of Tilly's original patterns, the Rosa dress, and so the size range is, you know, her original limited size range. It's not the extended size range that she does now. I, so I, I looked on her website and I couldn't see that she had increased um, that pattern. She may do in the future, I don't know, and certainly all her current patterns have got a much, much wider size range. So the size range on this one goes up to a size 8. And by body measurements, I'm a size 7. The body measurements are pretty good for me as a size 7. But I looked at the finished garment measurements and the size 7 just wasn't enough for me. For example, just from memory, the size 7 bust measurement was 107 and I'm 109 centimetres. But the finished garment measurement was 111 centimetres, which I just thought would be a little bit too tight for me. And my hip measurement is about 114, but the finished garment measurement, I think, was only 117. So it's, you know, it's meant to be a very slim fit. So I've just made the larger size all round, the size 8, and I have cut the waist area and just the top of the hip area a little bit wider. So this is a real experiment to see if it's going to work or not. Um, it might be that it's such a slim fitting shape that it just won't suit me. It'll be all right if I can stand up all day and walk around like a robot, no drama, but if I have to sit down it just might not be suitable and that, that's fine. Not every pattern is suitable for every person even if it is in your size. Um, so it's just an experiment. I hope it will turn out but in the back of my mind I'm thinking it's probably not unfortunately a style that will suit me unless I grade out a lot more at the hips which I you know I can do I can do we'll, we'll see what happens I've cut it out I've ironed all the interfacing on um, and I'm ready to start sewing my plan for the rest of the day was to actually plant the plants that we got from the garden store earlier in the day but it started raining so I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that so I might gosh dang it I might just have to get into the sewing room and start sewing instead um, but yeah so we'll see we'll see so there is hopefully a short little video or oh, 35 minutes now but there was there's a bit I need to cut out so hopefully this will be a shorter video there's I've actually got more makes to talk to you about but I'll put them in another video I don't want to make this one too long um, so there you have it I hope that has covered everything I feel like I've flown through this and that I've missed some important bits of information but if you've got any questions let me know in the comments down below i really do enjoy getting your comments and um i like having little conversations with you so please yeah let me know if you've got any questions about these makes if i didn't do you know look i've just noticed this is bad placement that is disappointing isn't it ah oh. two it's yeah Oh well, <laughs> I didn't notice that when I cut it out, but I couldn't have probably done anything different. I'm not sure, I probably couldn't have done anything different because I had virtually no fabric left when I had cut, finished cutting this out anyway. Um, that's the way the cookie crumbles. So please like and subscribe if you haven't done that already and leave me a comment or a question and I will see you next time. Ta-da!